The following episode of 15 Minutes You'll Never Get Back is in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This episode contains humor about subject matter that some may find offensive. We understand this, which is why we are warning you. This podcast was produced last year at this time, as Charlie discovered that she too would have to begin her journey, which she has and continues to do to this day. Some segments were recorded before the situation became very real for her. If you are affected by breast cancer in any way, we encourage you to visit Barry360.com, where a list of resources have been made available. Now, on to 15 minutes you'll never get back. The special boob cast. All right. So let's catch people up real quick. Give them the cliff notes. Remember cliff notes. I do. Are you kidding? Oh, man. Help me get through school. Right. The cliff notes of what's happening with me, because I know you're all very interested, because I'm a very exciting person. You are. So back in June, I felt a little marble in one of my boobs. Oh. Right? And I was like, huh, well, what is this? So I naturally called my bestie, who is a nurse. Yeah. And uh, she came over, and I whipped out my boob to show her what the deal was. And she's like, right, we're going to have to get this looked at. It's probably nothing, blah, 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 whatever. Right. Mammogram, done, followed by ultrasound and a biopsy, done. Right. Find out in the summer while I'm away that it is um, a cancerous situation. Yes. So the problem is that because, and the doctors keep telling me this, I'm so young, I'm so young. Yeah. That they're a little bit perplexed by this particular type of uh, breast cancer because it is not normal. It's generally for older people. It is not for people my age, which are so young. Okay? I'm sorry. Was that so young? It's so young. I'm so young. Okay. (laughs) So now we are, uh, you know, I'm I'm meeting with an incredible surgeon and uh, RVH's cancer um, facility is incredible and the staff there are lovely. And they basically said, we're going to go two ways with this. We're going to take out the lump. We're going to do a lumpectomy, some radiation. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Right. And they said, either way, you're going to survive. So in case you're all freaking out, wondering what's happening to me, I will survive this. Yes. Potentially. Yes. You know, my family might not (laughs) with (laughs) how I'm going to, how I might be in the next few months. But anyway, so, but they did say they wanted to do this genetic testing. Yeah. Which is fairly new. In the sort of combat of finding out or preempting yeah, situations. Yeah, you were saying this is the thing that that um, Angelina Jolie had. And um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus as well. Oh, okay. Okay, because she, right. right? So basically what the genetic testing does is find out if you were born with a particular gene. You're predisposed. That basically says, hey, your body will not fight off cancer the way other people's bodies might. Okay. So initially, yes, I have what they call, there's BRCA. And BRCA1 means one parent had a gene Uh that carried this cell. Okay. But BRCA2 Uh means both parents. Uh Uh-huh. And if you have BRCA2, you're basically screwed. (laughs) And in the nicest way... Um, is that both parents, so you're, you're basically both your cells are just like you're, you've been hit by both sides. So what it determines is that uh, I am BRCA2. Oh. And there is only the, the, a 10 to 12% chance that you are a BRCA2. And look what, at you. Look at me. Have you bought your lottery uh, ticket for tonight? You know what? Damn it, I did. <laughs> Because I, you know, it's like, hey, if I got those kind of odds, I'm going to win this damn jackpot. Exactly. So I find out um, from the genetics doctors who called that I am bracket two, but Uh it gets better. Oh. Yeah. Because if if that's not enough, right? Like if. But wait, there's more. Right? Okay. You know, I haven't been sort of slapped, you know, Uh every. Step along the way of this. Okay. Um, so basically what that does and means is I am going to have to have a full m- 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 what? what? Mastectomy? Mastectomy. Damn it, I can't even say it. <laughs> yes. So basically the ladies are leaving me. Okay. Uh, which is fine. You know, I wanted new ones anyway. Yeah. 
and uh, because my chances of it coming back yep. are solid, like a good like 80%. So let's get rid of them yes. right now and take out all of the, the yeah. crap. Right. Now, women choose when this happens to them different treatments. Yep. I am choosing to just like, let's get this done. Like, yep. I don't want any chances. Right. So, but I have a 5% chance as yep. opposed to an 80 that it could return even yeah. with no boobs. Right. Okay. Yeah. But because of this BRCA2 gene, I have a mutation, which means that the the breast cancer triggers other things. Uh-huh. So when all this is done, uh-huh. and uh, hopefully I have new boobs and I'm feeling awesome about myself in a yeah. few months. Yeah. Next year, yeah. I get to go in for, are you, are you ready? Uh-huh. This is going to be super great. Uh-huh. A full hysterectomy. Because what happens now is I am yep. in a very high percentage yep. of contracting ovarian or fallopian tube cancer within the next three years. Okay. Now, here's an upside to this. Yep. Is because I was on birth control years ago for about 10 years. Right. You know, in my yeah. years. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. That offered a tiny bit of protection. Really? From ovarian cancer. Being a yeah, being would, on the birth control. They don't, they don't teach you that in high school. They really, they should. <laughs> they really should. Yeah, keep picture. Now, Sally over here, she's <laughs> probably going to be okay because the guys talk very highly about her. <laughs> so, yeah. So, this is what's happening. And um, I am going to choose to use humor as yes. a coping mechanism for myself and everybody else around me. Because what I have found with the genetics, now this is where this gets a little complicated with the genetic testing and the BRCA. They are confident it has come from my father's side because my grandmother died of ovarian cancer. I see. In the 80s. Okay. So they feel like there's the line. There's the line. Okay. So they are insisting that my father be genetically tested because this gene in a man can mutate uh, with a very high chance of pancreatic cancer. Oh. And uh, what they are saying is from my dad's side now, my immediate family would be my aunt, his right. sister, and my two first cousins. I uh-huh, have two. Uh-huh. They also be genetically tested uh-huh, because that's uh-huh. the immediate bloodline, right? Right, um, which means I have to put a bit of stress on my my family to say, "Look, you're probably fine, but you should probably get this test." And they qualify, yeah, for this genetic yeah. test uh, to ensure better to know, right? Like- but you know what the problem is with these genetic tests? While they're incredible, and while they've been able to potentially save my life here, yeah, it's a little scary what they can find and what they know so quickly. Like, like not only did they hit me with, hey, by the way, you've got bracket two, both your tits have to go. But hey, next year, <laughs> the, the other crap that makes you a woman, we got to take that too. Like, I will literally be in it <laughs> by gonna, next October. Like, I'm like, be, like I, you get rid of all the, you know, like, like literally what is left <laughs> to make me... Look, 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 just because inside the garage they took down the garden hose attachment, the garage door and everything is still there. Yeah, well, God, you know. It's and lo- look at it this way. You're going to be able to f*** like crazy and never worry about whether or not the guy's got a f- on. <laughs> it's not going to matter. You'd be like, go ahead, f- it ain't going to make any difference. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, since you put it that way, you know, I'm feeling great about all of this. So uh, that is what's happening right now. I will uh, be having to leave mm. the show for a few weeks, hopefully at at the max. I will not be yeah. allowed yeah. Uh, to return to work probably until about the six week mark. Okay. Uh, but once I am able to sort of be mostly healed and have function of my arms and everything right. again, yeah, um, I will be broadcasting from home and yes. and you'll be here yeah and um it'll be funny and awkward and, and yeah. a total train wreck which is what we are anyway so pretty it'll be much it'll be pretty fun. much pretty much so um yeah that's um that's my life so okay. how are you uh good <laughs> good there was too busy to get any gas this morning in my oh, car shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, according to Women's Day magazine, a third of women regret this every day. What do you think it might be for the Cool FM Brain Buster? Hi. Hey, going for your Brain Buster. All right. Small boobies. <laughs> it's regret like, having small boobies. It's like you guys are crawling into my mind and reading my thoughts. <laughs> hey, 
You like your party hats all right, don't you? I don't. If they could be just a, a tad bigger. <laughs> tad bigger? <laughs> well, my <laughs> wife belonged to the itty bitty committee, so. <laughs> well, I must be the co-chair because it's, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. Nope. Not the, not the boob size. <laughs> all right, thanks. Okay, bye. Okay, right, bye. <laughs> so I have to go in for a pretty substantial surgery. Mm-hmm. Now, there are a couple procedures for uh, a mastectomy, right? I mean, they can just remove everything, but then there's like sometimes they have to go in and go like a lot deeper like than the sort of initial tissue. They don't until they're in there probably. Right. So I'm hoping that I can get reconstruction at the exact same time, yeah. okay, where they can try to rebuild and whatever, right? right. So for in my case, because I'm not a very large woman, and I, I mean that respectively in that there's not a lot of fat where they can pull, right, to put... Give me natural whatever. So they're going to have to hit the Is there some sort of a test we can do where they can see if mine would be, like, <laughs> compatible? You know what's funny? Because wow. Like, I, like... <laughs> you know how many people, and you guys are the sweetest, have been offering me their fat? Yeah, but I mean, like, I, got so, I, got, I got so much to give in this world. Like, my mother, literally, because, I mean, my... Oh, I've seen your mom. Come no, on. No, but she, she has, um, she's always had larger breasts. And, you know, as you get older, they do sag. And, you know, mm-hmm. like, augmentation sometimes needs to be had. So she's offered to give me her boobs. And I'm like, it's a little gross. But thanks, Mom. <laughs> well, little... I don't know. But, okay. I was kind of hoping to stave off, you know, the whole downward trend for I know, another like couple I'm, of decades. You know, th- something <laughs> good has to come of this. I need to get a lift after the fact. Yep. But, so, depending on the procedure, yeah. I may or may not be able to keep my nipples. <laughs> and this is, okay. a, this is a problem because... If it's enough, they like, no, we have to take everything. Like, yeah. And then so how it works after the fact is they do reconstruction. Yep. Apparently, there are incredible tattoo artists that can tattoo Well, just you. the other day, we were talking about those, the, the, the fake belly buttons. Right? See? But those are stickers. I don't need a... Can you imagine, like, my sticker nipple falls off? Oh, where did it go? <laughs> oh, it's on my back. You know, like, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate everybody offering oh. me their fat... And offering to tattoo me new. I just like, for the love of God, can I just keep the nipples? Like, can I just, you know, Mm -hmm. I just, so like Rob offered, you know, and this is very sweet, I suppose. He's like, okay. He goes, when this is done, he goes, I'm going to take you to California. Mm -hmm. He goes, and we will find you the best plastic surgeon who will build you nipples. I'm like, okay, so let me get this straight. Sweet offer that I'm going to get inflatable, you know, here, and then I'm going to fly to L.A. to get new nipples? I'm like, it seems a little counterproductive. I'm like, I'm sure people, there are nipple makers here, you know, like, I don't know. Hang on a second. Let me just see. I'll just look at Good thing we still have this old Yellow Pages yellow book pages. that I brought in. The Yellow Pages. Look saying, it up. Are there any nipple makers? What, what would, be under, would that be under tits, sir? <laughs> God. I don't know how it's working for you because I'll be 48 next week. I eat peanut butter like it's going out of style. I should put Dolly Parton to shame. And I'm lucky to be in the alphabet. So here, you know, listen, I I feel your pain. I barely hit alphabet status as well. Um, They say it takes a few months and we are to be patient. I'm 48 almost. (laughs) I'm sorry. even but, when I was pregnant, you know, I could have been a dairy farm, but I couldn't fill a bra. Wow. Here, here's the thing. I'm going to write a poem, and it's going to sum up everything you need to eat um, okay. to make your your garden grow. <laughs> okay. Make okay. So just, I look forward grow. to that, Charlie. With the blossoming of my new features, I, I felt the need <laughs> to uh, to be poetic. Hey. <laughs> Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How do your ladies grow? <laughs> <laughs> With papaya juice, sure to induce the ladies you once know. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. <laughs> how, do, how do your tatas grow? <laughs> I can't even read it. Okay. With eggs and fish, sure to make you quite the dish. There's no rhyme after that. I just That was it. Hold on one more. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. How do your party hats grow? (laughs) With peanut butter, the men will utter. Wow, look at those. (laughs) I didn't say it was.
was a good poem. <laughs> I love the way you worked in the word utter. <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so it's funny. Well, no, it's not actually funny. It's terrifying and horrifying at the same time. But again, um, trying to find some sort of humor to, to get me through this. So I thought about, like, I should take some pictures of my chest because they're going to be gone. Before and after? Well, I mean, just ha- these, these, these ladies have mm-hmm. been with me my whole life, right? Yep. And, now, and, and they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone. In a few days. So trying to wrap my head around that, too, it's also like, you know, you want to take maybe pictures to remember, right? That's why you take pictures for memories. And then I'm like, is that weird? But then uh, my bestie was over. Yeah. And uh, she says to me, she goes, okay. She goes, I hope you don't think this is weird, but I have a little art project for us. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. She goes, so I went to Michael's. Yeah. She goes, and I bought some plaster. Oh, my. So you know how pregnant women plaster their tummies and make the mold, and then they pull it off, and then they've got the baby bump to keep, oh. right? Because obviously once All you right. give birth, you no longer have the baby bump, Yeah. Well, at least most of us hope, right? So it's the same thing. She goes, okay, so we are going to make a, a mold. You're going to make a mold of, of the ladies? Of the, we're going to make a mold okay. of the ladies All and right. my torso. Uh-huh. And then she goes, then I'm going to take it home to my art room, yeah. and I'm going to dry it, and I'm going to paint it, and I'm going to make it super pretty, like decorated, like almost like a piece of art. Okay. And I'm like, okay, you know what? Actually, I think that's a really neat idea. Okay. So I'm going to do that. But so here, here's where, so now, of course, my brain is exploding with things thinking, okay, well, if we can make a mold, Mm -hmm. like maybe I can make other things like to remember my chest by, (laughs) like, remember my chest by, I know this is so, this is so sad. No, go with it. Go with it. But I'm like, maybe she could also make like, she could do like a, like a, like clay, like pottery, okay. and then like put it around one, yeah, and then we could hollow it out, and it could be like a bowl. Or oh something. no, no, no! Let's make it like a little creamer, so that when people come along and they want to put cream in their okay. coffee, it's a little. <laughs> oh my god, no? that's gross. No. Oh, you know what? We'll do it like the '80s. I'll make an ashtray. Hey, now you're talking. <laughs> uh, do you have a, a bedazzler I could borrow? A bedazzler? Yeah. Yeah. Just let me finish doing my jean jacket. Let you have it. <laughs> Why? Glitter boobs are back. Glitter boobs? Do you remember last year we did this whole thing and people were decorating and glittering up their bums to look like pumpkins oh, yeah. and jack-o'-lanterns? Yes. Well, glitter boobs are mm. a big deal. Uh, <laughs> creative people on Instagram. Some bigger than others. That's true. <laughs> The creative people on Instagram have been slathering glitter all over their bits and pieces in order to create these spooky Mm -hmm. looks. And now Halloween's just around the corner and there's glitter everywhere. So if you want to try the glitter boob thing, there's an Instagram page. It's called Go Get Glittered. And I put the link up for you. And I mean, it's it. They're really nice. The glitter. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, if you click on. Is it tastefully um, done? Yeah, look, if you if you if you I click on I have it on Facebook and I'm just saying if you are um confident enough to do this, good on you. But see, then I was thinking for myself, I'm like if I was going to bedazzle the boobs, what would I put on them? <laughs> A couple of little ladybugs should do the trick. Funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you? <ya? laughs> Introducing the Boob Dazzler, the machine that gives your figure a new flair. Transform your ordinary tops and tatas into a fabulous new look with rhinestones and glitter. Ordinary boobs become exciting with new and totally different looks. Make the ladies fashionable and unique with your very own design. Be the envy of your friends. From tantalizing to titillating, now you can give your knockers the Boob Dazzled look for a fraction of what it would cost at a spa. The Boob Dazzler machine, complete with glitter, four interchangeable heads, pattern, and instruction book, Everything for nineteen ninety nine. Money back if not delighted. Available at Zellers. The Boob Dazzler from the makers of Glitter. <laughs> oh my God! Breast Cancer Awareness Month is very important to us here at Central Ontario Broadcasting. For more information and a list of resources, please visit Barry360.com.